I am Dr. Arvind Chaturvedi from Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute and Research Center in New Delhi. I am the director of radiology there and I am formerly I was the medical director of the institute. The liver tumors can be either primary, that is they are developing within the liver itself without cancer being anywhere else or they can be secondary, that is cancer is somewhere else but most of them actually spread to the liver at some point in time. Surgery has been one option to treat these tumors and it was, it has been considered as one of the best options. But of late there are emerging options that you can destroy the liver tumor wherever it is, either primary or secondary liver tumors by various methods. One method is transarterial chemoembolization. You do a vascular cannulation and make the catheter tip reach right up to the tumor and inject chemotherapy there, which gets blocked there and that destroys the tumor. So no side effects of chemotherapy like hair loss or general symptoms. Another very emerging method to destroy liver tumors is radiofrequency ablation. Radiofrequency ablation means that you are actually inserting a needle, which is actually an electrode, into the tumor. It is done either under ultrasound guidance or under CT guidance. And having inserted and confirmed that the needle tip is in the tumor, you connect that needle to a radio frequency generator and the other leads from the radio frequency generator are applied on the patient's thighs, which are the earthing pads. So patient becomes part of an electrical circuit and the electricity flows quickly between these two. And this particular process causes friction, friction in the, in, the, in the tissue close to the electrode and there is frictional heating like we rub our hands during winters and there is heat which is generated. Similarly, because of the friction in the ions there, there is intense heat. And when the temperature reaches anything above 50 degrees centigrade, 50 degrees Celsius, between 50 and 60 degrees, there is tissue death within minutes. If it reaches 60 degrees Celsius, there is instant tissue death. So this is the process of radio frequency ablation by which you are able to destroy liver tumors without surgery. It also works when surgery has been done once and the second time surgery can't be done, but there is a tumor which has come up and you can destroy that with radiofrequency ablation. Radiofrequency ablation is a time-tested, proven method of destroying liver tumors, but there is a new technology which has come in now. And that is precisely what you mentioned, microwave ablation. I'll just clarify what microwave is. Microwave is actually a part of the electromagnetic wave. And depending on the wavelength, microwaves are the size of a bee, honey bee. Radio waves are as big as the size of a human being. And, and, and some of the gamma rays are only as small as, as a nucleus. So this is just to give you the comparison. So microwave technology has worked in different spheres before I come to the medical use. Microwave is used to cook food. We cook our food or heat food by microwave. So it's only a wave which is going inside the food. If it is wet, it gets heated. Microwave is also used in communication. All the satellites and cell phones, they work on the principle of microwave. Coming back to the specific question of treating liver tumors with microwave. To generate the, to generate the microwave, you have a machine which is the microwave generator. And at the same time, it is similar to an electrode. You insert a needle tip into the tumor under CT or ultrasound guidance. And once the needle tip is inside the tumor, you connect it to the machine and start it. Now one step is missing here, which was done in radio frequency ablation. There is no earthing pad required because it is not an electrical circuit which has to complete. It is only the tip which emits microwaves and these microwaves are causing actually oscillation of the water molecules. So the water molecules oscillate because of the microwave and oscillation itself causes heat generation and that heat again destroys the tumor. So in many ways, actually it is slightly, the technology is slightly different from RF ablation, but uses a similar, and it has some advantages as well. You see, the aim is to destroy the tumor and tumor alone, and not any adjacent normal structure which is close to that. By its very inherent nature, radio frequency ablation and microwave, both destroy only small areas of the tissue, but it may so happen that the small area of the cancer is very close to the kidney. So one method is that we inject a fluid, which is not a conductor, like dextrose, glucose water, into the interface between the kidney and the liver to move the kidney away. I mean, you, you give an insulating envelope. And with this technique, the heat doesn't travel to the adjacent structure to destroy it. So this is very, very interesting way of protecting 
the, the adjacent structures or those structures which are not intended to be destroyed. You inject glucose water or dextrose. For microwave also, same thing can be done. So this is the time-tested thing to protect structures. Well, it's a great idea to combine with, with it other strategies because if you combine radio frequency ablation or microwave ablation with other techniques, the results are better. There is a synergistic effect. So if there is, a, say, a breast cancer which has gone to the liver and you want to destroy the cancer with, with radio frequency ablation, it's always a very good idea to give chemotherapy also. So the chemotherapy and radio frequency ablation work together jointly and they have a synergistic effect. Similarly, it can be liver, primary liver cancers which are born within the liver. If they are slightly larger and they become beyond the capability of uh, RF or microwave ablation, then what can be done is transarterial chemoembolization, which I mentioned. So in that you inject chemotherapy direct at the doorstep of the tumor and that chemotherapy acts to shrink the tumor to be followed up with RF ablation after it has shrunk and it has become amenable to radio frequency ablation. So combining strategies with chemotherapy, with transarterial chemoembolization, even with surgery. If there are multiple tumors in the liver, maybe one or two can be taken out with surgery and the others can't be. So surgery takes care of those which it can and what it can't, those can be actually destroyed with RF ablation. And similarly, there is a radiotherapy technique which is called stereotactic body radiotherapy. And that is a focused radiotherapy. So all these strategies are evolving, but it's, it's, a, it's a given fact that if you combine strategies and work together as a team, the results are far, far better.